Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about 10GBE. More precisely I want to talk about 10GBE and QNAP NAS. Now you may or may not be aware that QNAP have been in the kind of area of 10GBE for quite a long time. So much so in fact that not only do they sell 10GBE NAS but they also promote their own range of upgrade cards. We talk about the QM2 series quite a lot. That's a common, uh, bunch of cards that have got combined 10GBE and NVMe SSD cache and stuff like that all built in together. But they also produce very cost-effective 10GBE PCIe upgrade cards. Last year, I talked quite a lot about the one port card that they produced quite a little while ago, which was probably my favorite 10GBE upgrade card of the last couple of years. Not only because it arrived at a very attractive price point of under £100 to upgrade your network interface uh, to 10GBE, or one port card there, but on top of that, it arrived with all the accessories you needed. It even came with a Cat6 e, uh, Cat cable included, and it ran straight away without any extra drivers installed on your QNAP NAS. Now, a lot of that is thankful to a company like Aquantia. Aquantia have been in the a business of producing very cost-effective processors for making 10 GBE significantly more affordable than it's ever been before. Last year was a bumper year for them, with their process be, processors being used in not only upgrade cards like this for NAS, PCI, uh, PC and Mac systems, but also Thunderbolt to 10 GB adapters as well, something another area that QNAP really got behind. But after that, things only got better. And now I want to talk about the two port card. This utilizes once again an Aquantia based processor inside the 107, and it arrives with an improved heatsink and cooling system built into the top with an active fan and two copper 10G base T 10GBE ports. Now, this is important because. This card arrives at around 160 quid, give or take, 165, 170 maybe at a push, and that's including tax. And it not only opens the door to 10GBE, but it opens the door to link aggregation, ultimately 20GBE. That gives you the ability to install this inside a device, a PC, a Mac, or a Windows system that arrives with a PCIe Gen 2 times 4 slot, which most modern NASs are arriving with these days, and allows you to add two 10GBE ports. Now, yes, link aggregation is on the table, but for true link aggregation on a card like this, you're going to need a decent CPU. The standard Celerons probably aren't going to give you anywhere close, even with the right media, to that max 2,000 megabytes per second that this card has the potential to give. But it does allow you to create two independent 10GBE connections between you and your NAS. So, Let's kind of talk about why that's such an interesting uh, angle and why it's a big deal. I talked, sort of touched on this in another video I was doing for Span and Span TV, but it's worth highlighting again here in a slightly different way. So, a lot of you buy NASs these days to work with photo and video editing. So, whether you're using large raw photos or editing video, standard one gigabit Ethernet just isn't cutting it. We're getting to a point now where the file sizes are bigger than the bandwidth. And although that is a crash generalization, there's still no avoiding that if you're editing raw files, some of these files are huge. And even if you're only editing small portions of it at any given time, they're just too big to do on a NAS and you're forced to do them locally. And given the size of some of these files and the fact that you're going to be running backups and you have to migrate it between different subsystems, for um, post-production, for backups, for distribution and metadata, having data on a NAS makes things a lot easier. It's one of the main reasons that Thunderbolt NAS has been so popular. Where this comes in is because if you look at even more affordable NASs that are arriving these days, such as the TS251D that retails for about 250, 260 quid, give or take. Um, and again, that's without that. On top of that, you can look at the new D series, the 53D and 2, 4 and 6 bay, all arriving with a quad-core Celeron, all with a PCIe Gen 2 times 4 slot. It allows you to add two 10GBE ports. Now, once again, that processor might not give you link aggregation speeds. Even with SSDs in a RAID 0, I don't think it's going to give you that maximum 2,000 megs. But <coughs> if you installed this in your NAS, then installed a one port card, and again about 9500 nicker for this, and install this card inside a PC system or another editing suite or anywhere really that could use 10GBE or use the QNAP 10GBE to Thunderbolt adapter so Thunderbolt systems can then take advantage of 
10 GBE and they're editing on the NAS, you can end up creating a very, very affordable editing suite where you can have multiple users connecting with their own individual 10 GBE port to their client system, so their host systems for editing. You can turn an affordable two, four or six bay NAS with the right media or standard hard drives with SSDs in caching and convert that into a great fast acting RAID array that your individual connected users can take advantage of. So rather than buying today a 10 GB enabled NAS and paying the premium on top of that, you can divide that cost accordingly. You can spend the money on individual cards. And the fact that we now have an, um, an affordable two port card makes things a lot more interesting. Because prior to this, if you were to try and create editing live on a NAS, you could only do, with regard to 10 GBE at least, editing one point to one point with a one port card in the NAS and your own machine. But now, multiple ports on a PCI Gen 2 card at this affordable level open a lot of doors. And given that the QM2 series for a while has got combo cards, but a lot of these are PCIe Gen 3, this is a big, big deal. And, you know, this technology uh, largely is thanks to Quantia and those drivers and the processors. They've been producing very cost effective uh, in terms of 10 GBE. But it has to be said that Kinup have really got behind this more than anyone else. And although this card may seem very limited to a number of you out there who would rather buy a complete system from the off, for other people that go for a more modular upgrade system where they can spend a little each year and spread the budget accordingly, this is an interesting choice. Lastly, it would be remiss of me not to highlight, once again, that QNAP to Thunderbolt adapter. The reason I'm bringing it up is there is absolutely no way that QNAP aren't working on a two-port version. I refuse to accept that because, one, their technology is there. The Aquantia chip exists and we have already seen it. Two, we've already seen very, very expensive equivalents of a Thunderbolt adapter that has Thunderbolt on one end and two 10 GPE uh, ports on the other. Atto have had a card like that, a uh, little adapter, and this thing has retailed for about a grand. We've seen technology like it for a long time, and much like 10 GPE, although it's cost a lot then, thanks to these Aquantia, driver, uh, Aquantia processors and companies like QNAP getting behind this, we are seeing huge developments. And that's why I would not be surprised if QNAP managed to find a way to create a Thunderbolt to two port 10 GBE adapter. When that happens, this card is gonna be beautiful because then you're talking about Thunderbolt connecting to uh, the converted via an adapter to two times 10 GBE into two times 10 GBE. And if your NAS has got the right media, you're looking at 20 gigabit connectivity to your NAS. And that, if you're a 4K editor, is mwah, music to your ears. But let's see how that's going. For now, this card is currently available via the link in the description. You can go there to span.com, you can go to NAS Compares to learn more in the hardware overview. And of course, we will be doing some speed performance tests on this card very, very soon. Things are a little bit slow at the moment because of COVID and the way we're having to re, uh, uh, rework and change our workflow here. But never fear this content is going to happen it's just everything's taking a little bit longer at the moment but thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video uh do click like if you did click subscribe to learn more and if you do go for this card do let me know how you're intending to use it in your work environment because i'd like to see this card out in the world and how it's benefiting people but otherwise i'll see you next time